Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have a chance to work on a couple of reels that uh, have been sent in that are, well, interesting to say the least. Pete, Pete sent these in. And uh, these are Pissafun reels, which are sold on Amazon. Nine ball bearing, uh, larger uh, bait casting reels with an 8.1 gear ratio. And this one simply, well, it's not turning. So it's not turning very well. It's not turning the spool at all when it's engaged. Something's going on in this reel. We're about to find out what that is. And hopefully we can uh, we can get this thing back working again. The uh, issue you have with reels like this is that you do not have uh, parts and service support for the reel. You do have a warranty when you purchase it. And the warranty, depending on the manufacturer, is either 90 days or uh, one year. And uh, usually for parts defect, and uh, it, and it usually says repair or replace. In almost all cases, it's replaced. They don't have a service team that's going to uh, take it apart and fix it unless it's something obvious and quick. So uh, you do get them at a uh, a lesser price. The price you pay is that well, if it breaks, it's disposable for the most part after the warranty period. Well, we're taking the reel apart. To try and figure out why this is what it is and uh, well when we do this I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like these types of videos and if you do like these types of videos and subscribe use that notification button that will let you know when I'm posting the videos and you can learn more about fishing reels and fishing manufacturers and uh, the reels that are on the market and uh, well how they may or may not be what you're looking for perhaps if you're trying to uh, purchase one of those. One of the things I recommend on a reel like this, because you have no support, is to take a lot of pictures along the way if you do dive into the reel itself. Now I'm taking pictures, I'm using a video camera to do that. I think that came from another project. And uh, I would recommend that you do the same. I guess that comes from here. <laughs> that, uh, this whole thing has been over tightened, I guess, in an attempt to uh, to get this to function properly. This is a left-handed drive reel, so it should come off with threads backing in a uh, reverse or a clockwise manner. And uh, well, we just want to relieve some of the tension on this thing. We've got to figure out what it is. And for the most part, these reels follow a common uh, design scheme. There's nothing usually that's uh, creative about it. It's usually a boilerplate kind of a scheme and most of the time the manufacturer is a reputable manufacturer that makes off-brand names for all kinds of um, outlets, retail mostly. Uh, this one's being sold on Amazon but the man manufacturer could be making other uh, branded product, the same reel if you will, under other uh, names uh, for distribution. All right. I think this is holding the side case in, so that's what we wanted to remove that for. I'm going to pull the side case off. Remove the spool. I just want to check under here. If I can get the spool out. Yep, there's some issues there. Let's see if there's a retainer on this side. Yep, we're okay there. Sometimes if you're having a little bit of trouble with that spool, uh, there's a clip on this side. What I'm, gonna do, I'm just going to see if I can pull this off this way, put a little bit of uh, grease in there, or pen penetrating oil. Come back and take the two side plate screws off. If, that's, if there's another one that's holding it in, then we're going to have to kind of go back to that, uh, that screw. All right, just trying to find my, my wits about me here. Looking for my screwdriver. I got all kinds of things showing up from prior projects and that's, that's a little bit unusual. Okay, one on the bottom, one on this side. Again, take your pictures. That's very important in terms of being able to reinstall it. And then when I take my pieces and parts off, they go into a parts tray. 
the parts tray helps me keep the parts separated, but also kind of keeps me in line with when I go to reinstall where they are so that I don't lose them. And I take these screws off and make sure that those screws are all the same size. If not, I try to identify the, uh, the ones that may be out. Okay. Okay, well, I went and had a cup of coffee. We've left this uh, to sit. I'm going to see if I can push it out now. Oh, it came out better. Well, we have a frozen bearing on the spool. That is almost always the issue. If you can't turn the axle shaft because the axle shaft is not spinning because it's frozen to the bearing. Uh, well, there's a lot going on in this reel because this should turn a whole lot easier with that. I did want to get over here so that we could remove that extra um, screw that's holding the side plate on. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm looking where that bearing came out of and that is a very uh, gummed up, sanded, rusted section. I'm very curious to see what we will find inside. At a certain point in time, if there's something that's missing, the bearing is replaceable, but if there's something missing or broken, then this reel is done, even though it looks nice on the outside. All right, this should come off now. Hmm. I'm not quite sure what's going on. I'm going to grab a micro screwdriver here. This is a weep hole here. Let's see if we can... All right, we get some leverage there. I use a... A razor knife is a lever here, see if we can move that up. All right, so we're starting to get some case separation anyway. So just be careful and be cautious when you do this stuff. Just because you don't want to break anything. I'm wondering now if this bearing here is not also frozen. The shaft bearing. because it's, uh, it's giving me an issue coming up. There's no question about it. There we go. All right, let's see what's inside now. Yeah, we got a pretty much a completely rusted out reel here. But we're going to continue to see what we can do here. I don't know if this one got stuck underwater or what the case is, but this is quite the, uh, quite the problem. All right, this is a override. Just got to figure out which way that override goes. Yeah, this is going to go under this, uh, going to go in this piece. Let's, uh, let's get this stuff off, see what we can figure out here. First, this is all sand and salt. Wow. All right. Um, take the two yoke springs, get those out of the way so you don't lose those. This is where pictures help. I already know we got one bad bearing in here. This stuff isn't cooperating very well. All right, drag stack is off. Click ratchet is off. Washers off, and I think yoke and pinion gear come off. Still got to figure out how this one goes. I believe it goes here. This should be a flipper button. It enables it to push down. It was resting in the case like that. So let's see, we have the stud in the back here. We have the stud in the back of the case here. All right, well, that's how it goes. And then that's kind of odd because the flipper button would normally up. This one's got you going down. Huh. Whatever. Okay. Not going to worry about it. That's the way it came. It may not have an active flipper button. Well, I, at the risk of getting 
extra caffeinated here. I'm just going to test these bearings. That one turns. This one turns. It's probably noisy. It does turn. The one on the spool does not turn. So we're going to have to find a replacement for that. Let's just take you through how to replace this bearing, or at least get it off, and then I'm going to soak everything. Actually, I can soak that stuff now with the penetrating oil. We're going to try and dissolve those salts and the like. This kind of brings you to one of those what's the preventive maintenance here kind of conversations. And the preventive maintenance is um, rinsing your reels off after you use them every time. Right. I can use a pliers most of the time to knock this pin out. If it is a removable pin, that's not a removable pin. All right. Well, the best we're going to try and do on this one then is we're just going to soak this one as well with the penetrating oil, hopefully to freeze that, uh, free up that frozen berry. All right, we're going to just put that on hold for a moment. I'm going to stop the video. We'll come back, do some basic cleaning here, take all these drag washers off, try and get these um, metal pieces clean. I think I'll use my, uh, my, my jewelry cleaner for that. Just, we did a episode not that long ago on the ultrasonic cleaner. I don't think there's anything in here that could get damaged, but there's a lot that could certainly be helped. So I think we'll take the opportunity to put the frame and the metal parts here into that cleaner. And then we'll come back. While I was waiting for the uh, ultrasonic, I did find a uh, little device that pushes pins out of bearings. And uh, that's what I was able to do here. It's a little butterfly type of a thing. So I couldn't get it out with the pliers, but I could uh, get it out with this uh, device. So we should be able to remove that bearing and find a replacement to uh, get that one working right. Okay, everything came out of the wash. Let's give you a progress update. I wasn't able to find a replacement bearing, but I did soak this in a, in a solution called PB Blaster. And uh, well, it's now it's turning. It's an odd sized one, and uh, I'm not sure where you could even get one of those from, but we've got it back functioning. These have come out of the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm not just pulling through now, make sure all those teeth are okay. And stuff on the back seems to be more of a, um, a tarnish than a corrosion. Seems to just move off the, the metal plating. So we should be able to go there. And uh, let's start the reassembly then, see what we can do. I've cleaned up the uh, pinion gears and the main gears, checking the teeth. There's a little bit left on this pinion gear here, so we'll take care of that. And while I do, I want to encourage you to ask questions if you're uh, curious about something, if you want to know more on a particular uh, real or an issue or whatever may be uh, concerning you, just uh, leave that question in the comment section. I will try to answer that for you. All right, I'm going to re-grease using fishing reel grease. There is a ramp side of the yoke that faces in, and there is a slotted spool. Uh, acceptor on that pinion gear that also faces in. Again, check all your teeth for uniformity. You don't want to see anything bent or broken, kind of out of sorts. And then get your fishing reel grease and go ahead and put that back. You can see why this is such a high ratio gear, very big main gear, small pinion gear equals high ratio. Before we do that, we need the click ratchet and the anti-reverse dog on. Let's go put those on. The, the click ratchet has a rectangular center. The dog is a finger jointed dog. That's the that's your backup dog. There is an instant anti-reverse on this. Then you have your small washer that goes over that. Now you can put the main gear back in. 
that seated. And then we have a traditional six uh, washer drag set. The first one is the larger hole in the center. Then we have two keyed washers, but one of them has got a kind of a bubble or a bell to it. That's the top one. The flat one is the one that goes on the bottom. Our second of the washers. These appear to be carbon text washers. The middle washer is called an eared washer. It has the two, two ears, if you will, sticking out the side of it. Top washer. Then the one with the bell, and the bell side faces up. High side faces up. And then we have the little lever here. Which is going to go in our case, and it's going to be a trip lever. It should mount from the back end of this case. This is where it's going to sit. I guess you can probably put it in this way. Just put it right on there. And then when we go in, we just need to make sure of that. I've uh, cleaned that, that bearing here that's working. Tested this one. This is a little loud, but we should be able to get away with that. With the reel re-greased and reset, all we need to do is put those uh, springs on for the in gear and the inside sleeve or the spacer for your anti-reverse. Clean a little bit of that up. And then we should be able to load our case. Now two things going on here. I need to match on this little uh, flipper lever thing. And I need to get this side case tie down screw in as well. And I guess we can't do it tilting it because that knocks your, your uh, one set off there. figure out how to get this thing up. Okay, that's almost the way we found it. a little bit of trouble with this override here. There we go. So this was out of sorts and uh, when we pushed this down we were able to get that to flip in, close the case nice and tight. And seat. So I'm going to grab the handle, make sure when I trip this that we can turn it. We can turn it nice and smooth now. Okay. You know what, Pete? I think we've got an opportunity to save this reel. One of the screws goes back up top in the case. One comes from behind. And a long one goes underneath. Up in this corner here. And that side case then is pretty much been cleaned up and uh, taken care of. some oil onto this worm gear. We've cleaned the 
barring we've soaked it I think we freed it up hopefully any of the rust that may have been holding that together is gone a little bit of grease onto the shaft now we can reinstall the spool we're putting a spool on that has line on it make sure that the line does not get trapped in the spool on the way back in and then we should be able to put our side plate on and then tie the side plate in with this and screw that down Good there. Next up then is the set of uh, retainers. We have two beveled washers. The belly goes up on the first, down on the second. And actually, that's got to be a bearing shield. Bearing shield first. While that bearing and go belly up, belly down. Always make her faces up. There's a washer that goes inside that. Before I put the other piece on, there's a cap. your spool adjuster tension cap. Tighten that down. Okay, next up then is our star adjuster. And this is a left-handed drive crank. You need to make sure that as you're putting this on, you're putting it on square. Take your time. Don't, uh, don't cross strip it. I just had a real command that we couldn't fix because it had a cross stripped handle on it. Have our handle next. You want to tighten that star adjuster down before you go any further. We have this little paper washer. I don't know if it's got any value to it at all, but it will go back on, so let's go put it back on. Not quite sure what the idea there is. If it doesn't get on, I don't think any of us are going to worry. Tension washer between the handle and the star adjuster. Handle. This is a leveraged handle. You can use it on either side. There's this little washer that went on top. Nut cap. Same thing with the nut cap. It needs to go on square. If it's not going on square, stop. And reset it. There you go. That's correct. Make sure your star adjuster is down before you tighten that. And then we have the tie down cap. And bring that over. I'll line that for the screw hole. Put the screw hole in, we'll see how we did. So the issue was a frozen bearing on the spool, which wouldn't allow us to turn, so I have every confidence that it will turn. And it does. We can back that up a little bit. Yeah, there you go. So we have a nice fully functioning wheel. Make sure that our spool spins. It does. Tucks back into gear. Drives are holding nicely. The spool is a little bit... Oh, there you go. If you 
there's two things we got going here. We got a mag issue, not a mag issue, a mag adjuster. That will free it up somewhat. And we have that spool adjuster, spool tensioner. So we got a couple of things to do to fine tune this one. I'm going to leave that for uh, Pete. When you're in gear, this will pop up, and then you can use that as, I believe, as a flipper switch. Yeah, 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 there you go. So if you want to get back quick, don't want to use the handle to trip it, trip it with your finger. All set. All right, one down, another one to come. Pete also left me a second uh, one of these with a similar issue. This one's a little bit more effective but uh, we'll get that one done as well. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. hope we've all learned something from that. And uh, if you like it, again, please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I want to thank our police, fire, safety, rescue, and everybody involved in our uh, well-being. I appreciate everything it is that you do and your career selection of choice and dedication to task. I want to thank everybody for watching, everybody for subscribing, and for everybody who helps to keep this channel vibrant. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.